This is a Hess's law calculation based on AS level chemistry. The um, calculation in this case involves um, calculating the standard enthalpy change of combustion of ethanol when you're given the enthalpy changes of formation. Okay, so in this scenario, the first step is always to write out the equations which relate to the data you've been given. So in this case, we've been given these enthalpy change of formation of carbon dioxide, water and ethanol. So we need to write out here the equations which relate to them. So um, enthalpy change of formation of carbon dioxide is the formation of carbon dioxide from its elements in their standard states. And the same, obviously, for water and for ethanol. The next step is to start to construct your triangle. So in your triangle, you always put the reactants of the equation you're interested on in, in this box, the products of the equation you're interested in in this box, and everything else which appears in your data but is not a reactant or a product goes into this third box here. Okay, so this then becomes your reaction of interest, the one you're trying to find out the enthalpy change of formation for. So in our case here, we're after the standard enthalpy change of combustion of ethanol, and that's represented by that equation there. Okay, um, so into this box here, what we're going to put is everything else that occurs in our data, but is not in this box or this box. Okay, so in this case it is, or whenever you're doing enthalpy change of combustion from enthalpy change of formation, it will be the elements in their standard states. Okay, so if you have a look at, for example, the enthalpy change of formation of carbon dioxide, the carbon dioxide from that equation already appears here as a product, but the carbon and the oxygen doesn't appear as either a reactant or a product. So it goes into the other stuff or everything else box down here. Similarly with water, we can see the water occurs as a product, so we don't need to worry about that. But the hydrogen gas and the oxygen gas does not. Oh, sorry, the oxygen does a little bit, but not quite enough. So we put them into this box here. The ethanol, again, the ethanol occurs as a reactant because you're going to be burning it. But these things here don't, so again, they're in this other stuff box. So everything else that is not a reactant or a product goes into this third box. Okay, the next step is to um, put the arrows here in the direction of the data you were given. So in this case, we're given the data for the enthalpy change of formation of carbon dioxide. The enthalpy change of formation of carbon dioxide begins with carbon and oxygen and goes to carbon dioxide gas. So this arrow goes this way, not backwards. Okay. The next one, the enthalpy change of formation of water, goes from the elements in their standard states to the water. So the arrow still goes in this direction. And the last one here, the enthalpy change of formation of ethanol, goes from the elements in their standard states to the ethanol. So the arrow goes from reactants to products for the data you were given. Okay. The next step is to work out what these arrows actually represent in terms of the data you've been given. So this arrow on the left here represents the enthalpy change of formation of ethanol. And this arrow on the right will represent two lots of forming carbon, a mole of carbon dioxide gas and three lots of forming a um, mole of water liquid. Notice water is in the liquid state because the enthalpy is change of combustion is um, it's under standard conditions and under standard conditions water is a liquid. Okay. Finally you've got to somehow out of the starter you've been given um, get the maths. So basically what we say is that there's two ways to get from these reactants to these products here. The first is to go the direct route, okay, which we've labelled with a big purple arrow. It's also the same as that arrow there. So straight from reactants to products. But that's the one we're trying to work out, so we haven't got the value for this in this um, problem. So alternatively, you can get from there to there, going around the triangle this way. Okay, so following this big large purple arrow here. If you want to follow this big large purple arrow here, 
what you're going to have to do is realize that this arrow here is going in the wrong direction. So we are going to have to reverse the sign of the enthalpy change of formation of ethanol. But these ones are going in the right direction, uh, same direction as this purple arrow. So we can leave the sign of these ones the same. So in terms of the mathematics, what that means is here we have reversed the enthalpy change of formation of ethanol. So basically we've taken this arrow and we're going this way, which is the opposite direction of the data we're given. Then what we're adding to that two lots of the enthalpy change of formation of carbon dioxide and three lots of the enthalpy change of formation of water. So that's these values here. Okay. So the last thing you've got to do very simply is to substitute in the values. So we want the reverse of the enthalpy change of formation of ethanol, which is given up here as negative 277.1. Then we're going to add to that all of this other stuff from here. So that's two lots of the enthalpy change of formation of carbon dioxide, negative 393.5, plus three lots of the enthalpy change of formation of water, negative 285.8. Okay. So if you work out the calculation for this bracket here, firstly a negative uh, removing a negative gives you a positive, so those two negatives become a positive sign. And then this bit in here all calculates out to negative 1644.4 kilojoules per mole. So then you just have to add 277.1 to, uh, or in other words, take away negative 1644.4, and you end up with a value of negative 1367.3 kilojoules per mole. And that is the enthalpy change for this reaction here, the enthalpy change of combustion of ethanol.